Hi everyone, it's John Oden on the development team here at Boson Software. What I'd like to do during the course of this brief video is to do a demonstration of the latest version of our Boson NetSim Network Simulator, Boson NetSim 13. This product will give you the hands-on experience that you need to allow you to meet your learning and certification goals with Cisco Technologies. You can go to our website, boson.com, and you can download this product in demo mode, just like I'm going to do right here, and you'll be able to go through the exact same demonstration lab that we're going to do. And then if you purchase the product, depending on the version that you purchase, the rest of the technologies and lab content will be unlocked depending on whether you choose the CCNA version for the Cisco 200-301 exam or the uh, CCNP track that would be Encore and Anarsi. You can see all of the lab content that we have for all of those. Now they'll either be locked or unlocked depending on the version of the product that you purchase. If you have just the demo version, all the labs will be locked except for these first few up here at the top. So, to launch any lab, all we need to do is to go to the lab in the lab tree and just give it a double click. After the lab loads, you'll see a couple of new elements on the screen. First is the lab documentation that we can scroll through. You can also pop this out and put it in a separate window. If you have two monitors, you could have the lab documentation on, on one side and the rest of NetSim on the other side. Just ma maximize your space a little bit better. And you'll be able to see all of the commands that you'll need to use. You'll see all of the device configurations, the IP addresses that need to be configured on each interface of each device, and all of the tasks that you need to complete to meet the objectives of the lab. So in this lab, our objective is going to be to be able to get to the console or the command prompt of one of the PCs over on the network A side and issue a ping and have a successful reply from one of the PCs over on the network B side. Now you could imagine this as uh, two small offices connected by a WAN link of some sort. That could be a tunnel using the internet as transport with ethernet interfaces on both sides of the routers uh, depending on the, the specific situation but this is what we're going to be working with here. Now the lab documentation tells us that all of these devices are configured except for router A. So all of our work is going to be focused on getting router A set up to be able to move traffic from network A to network B. Now the other element on the screen that I want to show you here is the console window and you can see we've got a tab here that says router A so if I hit the enter key the command prompt will respond from router A. Now you can look and see that this command prompt is the default and we don't even have a host name configured yet so let's go ahead and begin with that. That's where our lab documentation tells us to begin by establishing a host name on router A so we can tell which device it is that we're working with. So let's go ahead and get that done. So I'm in privileged exec mode. I have issued the config terminal command so that I can begin to apply configurations to this device. So I'm going to set up a host name of router A. So with that done, I'm going to go back and just do a show IP interface brief and you can see that all of the interfaces on this device they're unassigned and they are administratively shut down. So our first task is going to be to get the WAN interface between router A and router B up and going. So let's go ahead and do that first. So I'm going to go to the serial interface of router A that connects to the serial interface of router B and assign an IP address. So if we look up here at our uh, topology diagram, we can see that both of these serial interfaces are in the 10.1.1.4 network. This is a point-to-point -point network, so only we, we only need two IP addresses, so we have a 30-bit mask. So let's go ahead and set up 10.1.1.5 on router A. 10.1.1.6 is already set up on router B. 
since this is a point-to-point -point interface we're told to use a 30-bit mask so in decimal equivalent that's 255 255 255.252 so we have that done and we can also see from the diagram that router A is the DCE end of the serial link so we'll now need to establish clocking and with that done we need to bring the interface up so we'll issue the no shutdown command and we can see that the state of the interface serial 00 is now up and up so to verify that connectivity we can issue a ping remember we're 10. 1.1.5 on the router A side, so we'll issue a ping to 10.1.1.6, which is router B. And we can see that our ping is successful, so we have this link, the WAN link, up and run. So the next thing that we need to do is to establish connectivity on the LAN interface of router A to make sure that we have connectivity down through the switch to the PCs on the local area network. So let's go ahead and do that. The LAN interface of router A is interface fast ethernet 00. So let's configure that interface with the IP address that we're given in the topology. And this being the local area network side, we'll use a 24-bit mask, which in decimal equivalent is 255, 255, 255.0. And now let's enable this interface with another no shutdown command. So let's do a show IP interface brief just to review what we've done so far. And we can see that we have our serial 00 interface configured. We've verified that already. And now we have our fast Ethernet 00 interface already configured with the proper IP address and its state is up and up. So the lab documentation also tells us that the IP address of PC1 is 192.168.100.2. So let's issue a ping to PC1 and verify connectivity through the switch on the LAN side of router A. And we're good to go there. Now, any of these devices in our topology, if we wanted to get to the command prompt or the console, we can just right click in the lab topology and click on the console option and we get another tab for the new device that we wish to interact with. So we are interacting with router A here and there's PC1 here and if we were to look at the lab documentation we're told that the local area network of the network A side is 192.168.100.0 slash 24 and the network B side is 192.168.200.0 slash 24. So the PCs over here in network B, they are numbered 192.168.200.2 and .3. And we go back to our lab documentation and, and we can see that right there. So the goal, remember, is to be able to ping from PC1 in the 192.168.100 network to either PC3 or PC4 in the 192.168.200 network. So let's see what uh, happens if we try to do that. So just to verify, let's go ahead and open up a, a console window on PC3 and we can verify the IP address that we're going to attempt to ping to, which is 192.168.200.2 and we're going to do it from PC1, which is 192.168.100.2 right here. So here we go. So we'll issue the ping and we see that uh, we are not getting successful replies so we're going to have to get into troubleshooting mode here so what do we do well the first thing i'm going to do is to go back over to router a and take a look at the ip routing table with the show ip route command so what that tells us is that router a doesn't have any reachability to the 192.168.200 network. It doesn't appear in the IP routing table. So why would that be? And how could we solve that? Well, we could do a couple things. We could put some static routes in place, or we could enable 
a dynamic routing protocol such as EIGRP or OSPF. Uh, our lab documentation tells us to use EIGRP, so let's go ahead and do it that way. So I've used the command router EIGRP100. 100. 100 is the autonomous system number that the lab documentation tells us that's already configured on the EIGRP process on router B. So we need to set router A up to match that so that they can exchange information about their respective routing tables. So with that done now, we can use the network command to advertise the 10.0.0.0 network on router A as well as the 192.168.100.0 networks on router A. So let's go ahead and do that. So notice now that we have advertised our networks, we have an EIGRP adjacency established between router A and router B. And let's do a show IP route again to see if router A now has visibility to the networks connected to router B. So using the show IP route command, we can see that now router A knows about that 192.168.200 network that it didn't have visibility to before. So with that in place, let's go back to PC1 and try to ping again to PC3. This is the ping that failed before. Let's see if it's successful this time. And it is. So we have successfully completed the objectives of the lab. There are uh, a couple of other things that just let me show you very quickly. We have completed the verification steps that are called out in the lab documentation, but we also have a grading feature that we can use. By going up to the main menu, we can choose lab and grade lab. And notice that every device in the topology is represented. And in this case, they all have green check marks beside them that represent that the configurations on these devices are all correct. So if we go to router A, we can look and see that everything is all set. If there were any missing commands, that we should have executed but we didn't, they would be highlighted in red. If there are extra commands that we issued that we should not have, they would be highlighted in blue. So let's go take a quick look at that. So I'm going to go back to router A and intentionally break our configuration, okay? So we're going to go back into config mode and we'll go into the configuration of our EIGRP process. And let's do a no net 10.0.0.0. Okay. And that's going to break our EIGRP neighborship from router A to router B. And let's go back to the lab grading feature and see what that looks like now. So notice we have a red X on router A indicating that there is a problem with the configuration of router A. And if we go there and scroll down, we can see that yes, sure enough, the network statement for the 10 network is missing. And it's indicated with the red highlight. So that's how the grading feature works. And that's an additional configuration or additional confirmation that you can see if the lab was completed successfully or not. So thanks for watching our brief video walkthrough. Just a little bit of information to help you get started with Boson NetSim 13. Check us out on the web at boson.com. Also, let us have your questions in the comments below. If we can help you in any way to get up and going with Boson NetSim, we'd be very happy to do so. So once again, check us out on the web, boson.com, and thanks for watching.